Hi everyone, welcome. Uh, my name's Nat. Um, I'm very happy to be able to offer you this class today. Uh, online is something very new to me, so it feels quite strange to be talking to a device um, in my own home. It's a beautiful sunny day and it's the spring equinox, so uh, I wanted to focus on that today, this um, shift in the season, this tipping point in the season where uh, it kind of marks the, the end of the winter, We're coming out of that cold winter and into springtime and summertime, triumph of light over dark. That sadly means that you can see how dirty my windows are, so please block out all of this <laughs> um, and join me for hopefully what will be a, a really nurturing practice for you today. It's going to be about an hour long. Um, the first half will be quite energetic, quite um, dynamic. It's called vinyasa flow. So we'll be warming the body up, we'll be doing a little breathing exercise and then moving into some dynamic movement, some sun salutations. We will be generating some heat. Um, so you'll need to be wearing clothes that you can move comfortably in and that you can not get too hot in. Then we'll shift into the yin side of the practice. The second half roughly will be um, this yin practice, which is very passive compared to the active first half. Um, very cool, very soft, uh, very nurturing. Um, We'll be holding poses for, um, for some time. It's all floor based. So things that you would probably want to have handy are an extra layer, like a jumper or something, a pair of socks, um, something just to keep yourself cozy. And a blanket would be really useful. You can use, blankets are so versatile in yoga. At the moment, I'm sitting on one of these cushions. Um, if you have a sofa cushion or something you can fold in half, it's nice, we're gonna start sitting cross-legged. It's nice just to have the hips elevated. If you don't have a cushion, fold up a blanket. Just something so you can elevate your hips slightly so that we can sit in this, uh, this is called Sukhasana, um, which is easy pose. The actual translation is pose of ease. So it's a pose where you should be able to soften and relax and not there shouldn't be any pinching in the hips, which is why elevating the hips slightly above the knees would be beneficial. If your knees are still are really high, you're going to be using muscular effort to keep yourself sitting upright. So you could use one of these, you know, really high cushion um, and elevate your hips more that way. But if you want to take a moment to grab any layers or props that you might need, go ahead. Um, you can pause this and we will welcome you back when you're when you're ready. So, finding that comfortable seated position. And we're gonna close the eyes, rest the palms on top of the knees, or maybe slide them back along your thighs a little bit, just so you can find that your elbows can hang. And that weight in your elbows can help your shoulders to draw down away from your ears. You're not dragging them down, you're not pulling them down. Just really gently letting them soften away from the ears. Notice how each part of your body that's in contact with the floor or the cushion can press more deeply. You're grounding into the earth, so the knees, the thighs, part of the calves, the feet, the sit bones, feeling heavy and weighting down into the, into the earth. From that grounded root, you can feel a lightness coming from the waist up through the chest and through the crown of the head. And as we sit here, this transition, um, these first few moments of the class are really an important time to transition between whatever day you've had so far, whatever is going on in your life at the moment. At the time of recording this, um, we are in the midst of the coronavirus crisis. Um, so there's an awful lot going on for everybody. But yoga is really a practice where you can um, 
consolidate yourself, really. Bring everything together. Your body, physically, your mind, your emotional being. And so these first few moments of uh, pause, I guess, before the class begins, are so important. And I like to imagine whatever day you've had, it's like you've shaken up the snow globe. And these few minutes at the beginning allow the, the particles inside the snow globe to soften and sink down. It's that weightiness. And closing the eyes allows you to draw that, your attention inwards. Really check in with yourself. How does your body feel right now? How do your emotions feel right now? Try not to dwell on it too much, just have a thought. Give it a word and then we'll come back at the end and see if that's shifted. <coughs> now start to bring your attention to your breath. And perhaps start to elongate your breath slightly. Flattening the diaphragm down so that you push the belly out with each inhalation, deeply pushing it down into your body. And then softly releasing it through the nose. Notice how your breath feels cool as it enters your body through your nostrils. And warm as it returns out through the nostrils. The warmth, the energy of your body has created that shift inside. Your breath is the most precious thing you own. It goes on in the background all day, all night. And without it, we cease to exist pretty quickly. So treasure your breath. And while you bring your attention to it now in these, particularly at the beginning and the end of the class, um, honor it. Greet it, draw it in like a welcome guest. And throughout the practice, your breath is there as an anchor. If your mind starts to wander, bring your attention back to your breath. Track its journey. Before we start to move, I want to introduce um, a breathing exercise so we can manipulate our breath slightly. It's called pranayama and it's a way of um, using our breath to manipulate our state of mind, our mood. Um, so I want to offer you square breathing, uh, which is a square has equal sides and a breath has four sections to it. Let me just pause that slightly funky music. Uh, a breath has four sections to it. We think that we just breathe in and out, but actually there's a brief pause at the top of the inhalation and at the bottom of the exhalation. So I want you to um, make those sections equal. So we'll breathe in for the count of four, then we'll just suspend the breath for the count of four, exhale for the count of four, and pause at the bottom for the count of four, and then we'll repeat. And four might be too long for you, or you may need to count faster in your head. The idea is to drag out your breath for as long as possible and equalize it by um, having those uh, pauses equal duration as the inhalation and the ex exhalation. So, exhale all the way out. And then we're going to inhale for the count of four. One, two, three, four, 
and pause at the top of your inhalation. One, two, three, four. Exhale softly out. One, two, three, four. And pause at the bottom. One, two, three, four. We begin again. Make this your last cycle after you've paused. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Pause, two, three, four. Exhale, all the way out. Empty your breath. Two, three, four. And pause, two, three. Now allow your breath to come back. Naturally, there's no need to force it to do anything now. Blink open the eyes. Now bring your palms together, <coughs> your thumbs and your little fingers, and the bottom part of your hands will stay together, but your middle three fingers will pull apart, and this is um, called Lotus Mudra. Um, so we make this shape to represent um, um, beauty rising up from the darkness beneath. Um, so using your, uh, using your hands in this shape, bring your thumbs towards the heart center. Bow your head down. You can close your eyes, keep them open if you'd rather. And recognize the need for, um, for beauty and brilliance to emerge, you need a really strong soil. And this practice of yoga really strengthens and nurtures, and nourishes us so that we are then able to blossom and shine and be the best versions that we are, the best versions that we can be. And as you sit, just quietly, before we start to move our bodies, set yourself an intention that you will be open, like the lotus flower, open to change, open to new ideas, especially now. We need to have open minds, open hearts, in amongst the chaos and the turmoil. We must support each other, we must care for each other, keep our communities close from a safe distance. <laughs> and repeat, just inside your heart or your mind, I am open. I am open. I am open. Beautiful. Release the hands down. Blink your eyes open. We're going to start twisting our body. So on an inhalation, twist the left hand across to the right knee. The right hand goes behind. Inhale, reach the chest up. And exhale, twist. Keeping both sit bones down, keeping both knees down. Inhale, come back to the center. Swap your hands over to the other side. Lift the chest. And exhale, twist. 
can do that a few more times. Inhale, swing your arms round, lift the chest. Exhale, twist more deeply, see if you can go further. Inhale, spin round, and exhale, twist. Now come back to centre. Press both of your hands into your knees. Lean forwards and shrug your shoulders up <coughs> to your ears. Now drop your left shoulder towards your right knee, twisting out your back. And really, really keep this arm locked and pressing into your knee so that you can really stretch down the side of the body. Inhale, come back up. And exhale, twist to the other side. Drop the right shoulder to the left knee. Inhale again. Drop the left shoulder to the right knee. Doesn't matter how far you go, just go to whichever degree you feel a really nice stretch. And finally back to the original side. Nice. Now we're going to stretch out the side body again. So place the right hand on the floor beside you. Lift the left hand up. Hand up. Your right hand is going to be your traction to stop this hip from rising up and to stop you from toppling over so that you can really press into that hand and arch through, lift the side body out and away from you so that you can get a really beautiful stretch in between the ribs, the intercostal muscles, some of the lateral uh, abdominal muscles are getting a lovely stretch here as well. Sit bones stay rooted down, both of them, so you're not toppling over like this. Inhale, come back up and switch sides. So the left hand plants down, right hand reaches up and across. Push into the floor, use that sticky mat as traction so that you can lift up through the side body. And as you inhale, you can create space. And as you exhale, you can bend a little further. Great, and come back up to center. Right, we're gonna let our legs move a little bit now, which you'll all probably be very relieved about. You may want to shake them out a little bit. And we're going to come on to all fours. Right, let's start that music again. So, come on to all fours. Your wrists should be just below your shoulders and your knees should be just below your hips. I always say this, but I've never actually seen from the side. Look, there we go. <laughs> Flatten the toes. We're going to do cat-cow. So drop the belly down, kick the tailbone up, and look up. So you're arching, sinking your spine down and looking up. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, tuck your tailbone under, curve your back and look between your feet. Exhale. Inhale, come back up. This one is cow and curl through to cat, tucking the tailbone under once more. Moving with the breath. Exhale, curling through. Now we're going to turn it on its side. So instead of it being just a up and down movement, we're going to move from side to side a little bit. So imagine you've got a tail and you want to look at it behind. So you can drop your hips out to the side, but you're looking behind, twisting from side to side, rolling over your knees. Just a couple of times, loosening out the hips. Nice. Now, uh, we're going to go into a balancing pose, which can be quite um, challenging. I always find it a really interesting indicator of how well balanced somebody is, but also you can see massive progress. If you practice this daily, very, very quickly, you'll be a master of it. That's the whole point of yoga, it's a practice. So again, on all fours, you're going to lift your right arm up in front of you. So you now only have three points of balance. Now lift your left leg away from you behind. Now you only have two points of balance. And sometimes you see a lot of this. But if you reach forwards with your right fingertip and back through your left toes and press into the ground with your uh, hand and your knee, you should be able to find some balance here. Inhale. Now exhale, draw your right knee and your left, no, your right elbow and your left knee together. Really, really hugging through the, the abdominal muscles. Reach out, inhale and exhale. Hug knee and elbow together. Once more, reach forwards and back. Inhale and exhale, come together. Place both hands and knees down on the mat. Notice how both sides of your body feel different now. 
Now lift up the left hand and reach the right foot out behind. You can choose whether you want to have your right toes pointed or stretching through the heel. Steady gaze ahead of you. Once you've found your stability, inhale, reach and exhale. Knee and elbow meet in the middle. Then you have a little wobble like me. <laughs> inhale, reach, exhale. Hug knee and elbow together. Inhale, reach. Last one, make it the best. And hug knee and elbow together. Back onto your hands and knees. Tuck your toes under. Scoop your navel towards your spine. Really engage your abdominal muscles. And you're going to lift your knees an inch off the mat. And you're going to hold it there for five, four, remember to breathe, three, two, and one. Now lift your hips, straighten out your knees, and push back into downward dog. You may need to adjust your feet if your um, feet are too far apart or too close together, you might find it a bit cramped. Press your fingertips and the knuckles of your fingers into the mat to take the pressure off your wrists and start to walk your dog. So drop one heel at, at a time, stretching out the backs of the legs. Now bend both knees, kick the tailbone up to lengthen through the spine, lifting the hips, and then slowly start to straighten the legs, pressing through the backs of the knees. If your heels can lower down to the ground, great. Don't worry if not. Lots of people's, uh, the backs of people's legs can be very, very tight. Achilles tendons can be tight. We're just gonna spend a few breaths here before we lift the right leg up into the sky and then do that same movement. So that knee is going to draw in, use your stomach muscles to pull it and it's going to tap the outer edge of the right elbow. Breathe in, reach it up again and breathe out. Tap your right elbow. Breathe in last time and tap the right elbow. Hold it there for a moment and come back into downward dog. Now lift the left leg up. Breathe in and breathe out. Left knee to left elbow. Breathe in and breathe out. Left knee to left elbow. Once more, breathe in, reach up really high and breathe out. Left knee to left elbow. Hold it for a moment, lift the heel up, hug everything in and lean back into downward dog. You can at any time, if you need to, drop to your knees, sink your hips back towards your heels and rest in child's pose. This pose is always here, it's really soothing. Folding forwards, pressing your forehead to the ground can be a very soothing position to be in. Something funky is going on with my playlist, I do apologise. Okay. We're gonna move into a sun salutation now. For those of you who haven't done it before, I'll break it down. We'll go really slowly the first time. This is the, I guess the most simple, straightforward version. There are way more elaborate, complicated versions, but we'll start off just with a very simple one to begin with. So start with your feet um, a little distance apart. You don't want them pressed together. You don't want them too far apart. So just perhaps you could fit a fist in between your feet just so you've got a sturdy base. And for a moment, we're just gonna settle here. Lean forward slightly on your toes, lean back onto your heels. Just shift the weight from side to side so that you can make sure that the weight is evenly balanced and distributed between all the sides of your feet. Pressing down through the feet, your legs are active. Draw the thigh muscles up lock the knees, tuck the tailbone under, and from that grounded bottom half of your body, the top half can fly and lift up. There's a lightness to the top half of your body. Roll, roll your shoulders up and back, lengthen the neck, draw the chin slightly down, lengthening through the crown of the head, mountain pose. Now bring the palms together, thumbs touching the heart space and glance down at your thumbs. 
As you inhale, reach the arms up. Follow your thumbs with your eyes. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, fold forwards, hinge from the hips. Wherever you get to, the point of yoga isn't to be able to touch your toes. Some people can, some people are desperately trying to. That's not the intention because what you're doing here is just rounding your back. You're not actually working your hamstrings. So trying to keep your back as flat as you can, you can rest your hands wherever they need to be resting. If you've got blocks or props, you can rest on them. But we fold forwards on an exhalation. Then pressing the hands into the calves or the thighs or the floor, you inhale, elongate your, the crown of your head, flat back and fold forwards again. Exhale, inhale, reach all the way up. Bring the palms together and then follow the thumbs as you draw them down to the heart center. Breathe in, reaching up. Breathe out, fold forwards. Breathe in, press into the legs, flat back. Breathe out, bend the knees slightly, plant the hands on the mat, and then step the right foot and the left foot back into plank. Take an inhalation here. Exhale, drop the knees, kick the hips back slightly, and then swoop the chest through in between the hands. Flatten the feet, draw the shoulders back, elbows pointing back and lift the chest and then inhalation into cobra pose. Exhale, tuck the toes, peel the body off the mat and come back through downward dog. Take two breaths here. Try to make the creases of the elbows look at each other rather than having them twisted forwards or pointing down which will um, hunch your shoulders. Try to rotate them round so that you're the creases, the eyes of your elbows are looking at each other. On your next inhalation, come up onto the tiptoes, bend the knees and lightly step both feet forwards to the front of your mat. Inhale again, flat back. Exhale, fold forwards. Inhale all the way up, palms touch and we flow again. Exhale, fold forwards. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, this time step the left foot back and then join it with the right foot into plank. Pause here. Inhale, drop the knees, kick the hips back. Exhale, slide through to cobra. Inhale, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, peel yourself off the mat, press, press the hands, lift the hips into downward dog. Two breaths. On your next inhalation, come up onto the tiptoes. Lightly step the left and then the right foot forwards. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach all the way up. And we flow again. Exhale, fold forwards. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, step the right foot and then the left foot back into plank. Exhale, drop the knees, chin and chest. Slide through into cobra, inhale. Exhale, downward dog. Just one breath here. Inhale fully and exhale. Inhale, look forwards, bend the knees, bounce the right foot and then the left foot forwards. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up, reaching high. Exhale, palms together. Let's go one more time. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, step left, then right foot. On that same exhalation, drop the knees, chin and the chest. Slide through into cobra, elbows pointing back, shoulders down. Exhale, through to downward dog. Hips high. And exhale, through the mouth maybe if you need to. Inhale, look ahead, bend the knees and lightly step the right and then the left foot forwards. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach all the way up. And softly bring the palms together. 
in front of the heart space. Just pause here for a moment, see how your body feels in response to that movement, that flow. Because it's the spring equinox and this is when, this is the time of growth and birth and nature really bursting. I wanted to do um, a tree pose sequence with you. Um, so tree pose is like this classic pose that it's iconic, I guess. <laughs> Downward dog and tree pose are the ones that people immediately think of when they think of yoga. And tree pose needs, like the lotus flower, it needs to be really strongly rooted into the ground. So that grounding that we were doing earlier in our feet, that pressing into the earth. Before we had both feet pressing into the earth. In tree pose, it's a balancing pose, so we need just one to be pressing. We're going to start pressing the right leg. So lean your weight slightly to the right, so much so that the left can slowly lift up. Come up onto the tiptoes. It's a really nice slow way of getting into tree. There's a tendency to just ping yourself into the position and then there's nowhere to go. There's no you're just copying a shape, it's not about the feel. But for me, yoga is so much about how the poses feel in your body, not how they look. So drawing your left knee out to the side, keeping your left toes on the mat, and the left heel pressing into the right leg. And this, for some people, can be enough of a challenge, or you feel like, actually, yeah, I could go further, but I'm getting enough from this pose at the moment that I don't need to go any further. This is level one. If you feel that you'd like to go further, start to slide your left foot up your right leg and press your foot into your leg as well as pressing your leg into your foot because you're only balancing on one foot. Your tree will be a little bit wobbly. Trees need to have some flex in them so you're not, nobody expects a tree to be absolutely rigid. It needs to be able to move and adapt. If you feel you can go higher, miss your knee altogether. Don't, in tree, you must never press your foot into your knee. And I see it a lot. So if you want to go higher, try and get your heel as high up into your groin as you can. And more important than ever, press that foot into the leg and the leg pushing against it. Everything hugging into the midline. Trying to keep the hips as level as you can, you'll never get them completely level. And your palms, your hands can do whatever they want. You can have them resting on your hips, at your heart center, go out to the sides. Beautiful. Now releasing that, but keeping your knee high. So still pressing into your right foot. Ooh, get the wobbles. Lift your knee up as high as you can. Your left knee. Hug your knee into your chest. Now stay where you are, I'm just going to shift around the other way because we're going to turn to the side. So hugging that knee in, you're then going to release that grip, soften your right knee, kick your left foot out behind you, strong standing leg, your heart and head reach forwards, your right foot, no your left foot sorry, reaches behind, left foot, <laughs> right foot <laughs> is pressing down and your head is reaching forward, so you're kind of counterbalancing yourself. Hug everything in, integrate the pose, lift up. You'll be wobbling, you'll be trembling. Now lightly land your left foot behind you and find yourself um, in the, the basis of these warrior poses. Some of my favorite poses, uh, the warrior series. So your front foot is pointing forwards and your front knee is bent more or less at a right angle, it doesn't have to be, but the knee should never be ahead of the foot. It should always just be above the foot, the ankle. Um, your left leg is not pointing backwards or you'll be very destabilized, and it's not pointing out to the side, it's just slightly pointing in so that you can turn your hips to face the front of your mat. Lift your arms up, breathe in, warrior one. And as you breathe out, open your hips out to the side, Warrior two, beautiful. Sink down here, gaze across the middle finger, and as you breathe in, 
turn the palms to face up, lift the arms up, straighten that front right leg, and exhale, sink down. Twice more. Inhale, breathe in. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, lower down. Inhale, reach up. Last time, really, really reach. And exhale, lower down. Really pressing through the back of that um, extended leg behind you. Now, pivot on your back foot. Pivot. Allowing the knees to sink down a little bit. Find some softness. Hugging everything in, even though your legs are split apart, hug everything in towards the midline. And then from that softness, you'll be able to lift yourself lightly up into that uh, flying pose again. Swing your knee through to the middle. Your right foot, right leg will be telling you it's working pretty hard now. And release the knee, extend the toes. Can you see? <laughs> really got the trembles. And lower down. <sighs> You'll probably want to shake your legs out a little bit now. We get to do it all on the same, all on the other side. So, this time pressing into your left foot. Really sink down into your left foot. Pressing your toes, your heels, both sides into the mat so that your right foot is kind of surplus. You can just lift it up. Kick your knee out to the side. Toes touching the ground. Heel pressing into the right calf, left calf. Slide the foot up if you feel you'd like to do that today. I always get a little bit of cramp in this pose, so excuse me. On this side in particular. If you want to, if you did it last time or if you feel like you'd like to challenge yourself this time, bring your right foot into your groin. Press your foot into your leg and your leg into your foot. Everything hugs into the midline. There's roots growing down, holding you firm but a lightness in your chest, in the top part of your body. Neck long. You could hang out here forever. Now release that um, connection. Bring the knee up, there's a little wobble. Hug the knees, hug the right knee in towards the chest. Stay there, I'm gonna spin around the other way. Inhale here, lift a little bit higher, and exhale, release that grip, soften the standing leg, kick the, slowly so that your body can adjust to the balance, adjust to the different uh, center of gravity, reach that right foot out behind you, reach forwards through the crown of the head, straighten that standing leg so you've got opposing forces down and from side to side. Inhale here and lightly bend your standing leg, land your right leg on the mat behind you, that same stance. I forgot to say at the beginning, there should be a, the alignment, ideally, is that the line from your heel crosses the, uh, the arch of your back foot. So if you're too far over like this, then it will be too unstable. So roughly that line from your middle toe through your heel should hit the middle of your uh, back foot. Sink your hips down. Then they won't be able to face forward, so a slight sort of 45 degree angle. Press through the back heel. Lift the arms up, warrior one. And as you exhale, open out to the side, warrior two. Gaze across the middle finger. Inhale, straighten the front leg, reach the arms up, and exhale down. Inhale up, and exhale down. See if you can sink a little further. Inhale up, press through the back heel, and exhale down. Settle here in warrior two for a while. Spin your front thigh around and out so you're not collapsing inwards the movement is rotating outwards, so you're opening up your hip. There's a line, a dagger of energy going down through the outer edge of your leg, really, really pressing into the outer edge of that foot. By doing that, you'll take some of the pressure off your front thigh, which we'll probably be talking to you right now. 
Beautiful. Pivot on the back heel, on the back toes rather. Softness in the knees, have a little bounce so that you're ready and light and balanced enough to be able to lift off the back foot. <laughs> I didn't cheat just then. <laughs> and reaching back through the hands, back through the right heel, forwards through the crown of the head and down through the left foot. Now, hinge from the hips, lift the right knee up, hug the knee into the chest. Your, right, your left leg only has to work a little longer. I've run out of space here, so I'm just gonna turn to the side, straighten the leg in front of you, lift it up. The shakes are good. The shakes are really good. And lower down. Great. We're gonna move into the yin practice now. So you may want to put some more layers on. Um, but to transition into it, we're going to shift into child's pose, which is that soothing pose that's always there. So big toes touching. You can either have your knees together or knees out to the side. They have, they're both great versions of the same pose, just slightly different qualities. Play about with it, see what feels good. If you need to have a cushion to sit your hips on so they're not hanging in space, um, have something handy and fold forwards. Allow the forehead to rest on the mat. Reaching the arms forwards, or you can have your arms alongside your body. And we're just gonna spend a couple of minutes here. Allowing the body to settle and sink. So yin, we all know the yin and yang symbol, that black and white symbol. Everything, uh, everything in the world is a balance of light and dark, masculine, feminine, active, passive, uh, sun, moon, heat, cool, and we're almost programmed nowadays to be overly yang, overly active, doing all the time, heat. If we're not doing anything, we, we feel we're missing out. Or if we're not achieving something, we must do more in order to achieve it. But yin is equally as important as yang. It is the cool side. It is the, um, the pause. It's the exhalation, that releasing breath, whereas yin is the inhalation. Yin is the crest of the wave. Sorry, yang is the crest of the wave. And yin is the calm between each wave. So it may feel very, uh, unnatural to you this this next section of the class um, perhaps that means that you need that balance even more uh, it's not an opportunity to um, make no effort and relax it is still challenging we will be holding poses you will feel sensations in your bodies we're really trying to stretch connective tissue not stretch i apologize that's absolutely not right <laughs> get beyond the muscles so that we can um, work on the connective tissue um, stimulate it stress it muscles are yang and they are effort and they're working all the time so we're trying to relax the muscles so that we can feel deep sensations in the connective tissues, the fascia, this network of um, um, support, this support structure around our bodies. 
So lifting up from child's pose, coming through all fours, cross your legs beneath you and sit back on the mat. We're going to go into a reclined butterfly pose. So bring your feet together and allow your knees to drop out to the side. If this is the further away from your body your feet are, the easier the pose will be and the closer uh, the harder it will be, the more strain. By all means have a cushion or something to rest your knees on but we're going to recline our bodies back and lay back in butterfly pose here, allowing the knees to spread out to the sides. You will have a natural curve in your spine. Oh. Spend a couple of minutes here. You'll feel this in the um, in your inner thighs, most likely. And even if it feels as though you could open your thighs out more or do a more extreme version of the pose, try to resist that urge because we really want to go to about fifty. 30 to 50 percent of our ability because we hold these poses for time and it's in that lingering that the magic happens it's like when you have braces on your teeth it's not an overnight fix it's a slow slow process a little at a time, very, very gentle pressure. And notice how your breath affects the pose. Perhaps if you elongate the exhalation, that softening yin breath, You can send a signal to your body. Perhaps some muscles are holding on. You really want your your muscles to melt into the background in a yin pose. come out of the pose. Go really slow. Start to draw your knees, you know, use your hands if you need to, draw your knees in towards each other. Be really, really mindful of how slow you need to be. This whole practice is really slowing everything down. You might want to hug your knees in towards your chest. Just gently rock from side to side. Now place the right foot on the mat, the knee bent, rest the left ankle on top of the right knee or on uh, the right thigh and drop that knee out to the side. You could just hang out here for a bit or if you want to deepen the stretch slightly we're going to open up our hips. You can lift that right foot off the mat, reach your hands behind your thigh or if you can, reach them to just below the knee. But actually for me that feels too much, so I'm going to go back to my thigh now. And we just spend some time here allowing that left hip joint to softly open. Notice where you're holding on. Try to make, yes, you're going to have to use some mus muscular effort to hold the shape, but try and be as efficient as you can. Try to, with each exhalation, tell a different 
set of muscles to soften. And your breath is always there as the mind starts to wander. Thinking ahead, the next thing that's happening, the next thing you need to do. Just pause that monkey chatter. The point of yin is that we, over time, learn to be able to calm those fluctuations of the mind. So whilst those thoughts naturally come up, we are, after all, only human. Try not to attach yourself to them. Now release your grip. Rest both feet down on the ground. And then lift the left foot. I apologize, the right foot. Resting the outer ankle on the left knee. Um, right knee drops out to the side. Reach your hands behind your thigh or just below your knee. You may find that one side feels tighter than the other. That's completely natural. See how different it feels at the beginning of this pose, how tight that hip feels compared to how it may feel at the end of this brief minute and a half that's all we spend in this pose eye of the needle softening the vertebra of the spine allowing them the whole length of your spine to press into the mat Can you soften more for the last few moments? Your jaw, your eyes. And now release both feet to the ground. Widen your feet to about mat width apart and then drop them both to one side, drop both knees to one side. And lift them up and drop them to the other side. This is windscreen wipers. Just rolling over the sacrum, that back section of your pelvis, as you drop both knees over to one side, then lift up and drop them over to the other. And when you land on your right side, roll all the way over and push yourself up. We're going to move through um, three poses now before we repeat them on the other side. This um, is sleeping swan, which looks a little bit like pigeon, but it's a very different approach to pigeon pose if you've done that before in another yoga class. Um, so swan, uh, we're going to start on all fours. You're going to draw your left knee towards your left wrist and then swing your left foot across the midline towards your uh, right knee and no further. So in a more yang style, you'd probably aim for it to be up here, but we're really not trying to go into it that deeply. And then do a little caterpillar walk to get your back leg, your right leg behind you. Have a blanket handy because you may want something just to rest on your um, your right hips so that they've got something to rest against, something that's not going to, not holding you back from the pose, but something that will just gently support you. Keep the toes soft, you don't have to have the foot flexed. And if it's sore on your knee, you can put some padding underneath it, double up your mat, or even roll over onto the outer edge of your knee. This is more about how the pose feels than how the pose looks. And it mustn't be 
because we'll be here for a couple of minutes. It mustn't be something that you feel you've got to endure and get through. It needs to feel challenging, but really delicious. So you can start with the um, chest high in swan, or you can fold forwards. This will, uh, in swan, there's a deeper bend on the lumbar spine. In sleeping swan, where you come forwards, it reduces the strain on the spine, but it increases the twist on the, the opening of the hip. And if you want a cushion or something to rest your head on, use whatever props you need. And we'll spend a couple of minutes here. You'll probably be feeling quite a deep sensation in your hip. And that might dominate your thoughts. And it's good to have something uh, to anchor the awareness to, but don't become all consumed with that, that sensation. Try to scan your attention around the rest of your body. See how does your back foot feel? Try not to shift your body at all unless you're in discomfort, in, or pain rather, or if you feel that you can lean more deeply into the pose, but otherwise try to stay. We're all for instant fixes, but sometimes the magic happens when we don't have the answers straight away, or we can't fix things straight away. And with each exhalation, softening the body, making sure the shoulders aren't hunched up around the ears. Now, slowly lifting your body up. Go slow, go gently. You're gonna remove whatever props you have there and roll over onto your left hip so that you can open up to the side into a half butterfly pose. So keeping your left knee bent and your left foot in towards your groin, your right leg extended out to the side. You don't have to have it flexed or active, it can just flop open out to the side. And we're going to lean gently to the side, so rest your elbow on your thigh. So it's a lateral bend rather than a fold forwards like that, trying to keep your shoulders open to the side and stretching out the side of the neck, the left hand side of the neck. Become curious about how your body responds to these poses. How do you respond physically? And how do you respond emotionally? soften for the last few breaths. Now with great care, lift your body up upright, draw the legs together, and we're going to spin onto our backs and continuing to stretch out that left side of the body, 
and we're going to lie flat on the mat. Raising the arms up above the head, keeping the hips where they are, walk your feet across to the right. And then shuffle your head and your shoulders across to the right as well. So we're making a banana shape. This is banana asana. Banana asana. It's a really deep, long stretch across the left side of the body. You can cross your left foot over the top of your right. We're only going to spend one minute in this pose. And if it's uncomfortable to have your arms above your head, it's fine to have your hands resting on your belly. But the option is there. And rather than holding on, see if you can let your body really, really melt, soften into the into the really deep part of the pose. Slowly walking your legs and your upper body back to the centre. Just pause a moment there and notice how both sides of your body feel different. And then hug the knees into the chest. Roll over to the right and bring yourself back up to all fours before we repeat those three poses again. So come onto all fours, keep the attention and the focus inwards. Slide the right knee towards the right wrist. The right foot comes across the midline towards the left knee and then you do little caterpillar walks, walking your left foot back to whatever degree your hips feel comfortable. If they're up here, if this is 50% for you, then hang out there and put something, a cushion beneath your hips. If not, you can go a little deeper. Find somewhere juicy, but not too kind of spiky. And then fold forwards into sleeping swan. may find one side is a little bit more pinchy than the other so as quickly as you can make any adjustments that you need so that you can rest a while linger marinate more breaths. Give yourself permission if you need to come out of the pose. You can at any time. See if you can hold the stillness for a little longer. Please do so.
slowly begin to lift your chest as if you went into sleeping swan and roll onto the outer edge of your right hip. Rotate your left leg so that you can come into this um, half butterfly pose again. Um, find a grounded, a sense of grounding before you lean over to the side. And by all means you can stay in this this version of it, but if you want to add the additional element of the lean, then we're going to lean to the side and stretch out, lean to the left and stretch out the right side of the body, so lean your elbow on your leg, drop your right arm down beside you so that you can stretch out the side of the neck, and try not to let the shoulders collapse down rather the right shoulder stays high so this one does need a bit of effort to hold you upright but between that effort find space ease softness scanning your body, any muscles that start to creep in and tighten to support you. slowly start to press into the earth, lift the body, bring the legs together carefully, swing around and lay on your back. We're going to stretch out that left side of the body again, right side of the body. <laughs> so walking the legs across to the left, keeping the hips where they are, and then shuffle the top, the shoulders and the head across to the left. You can reach your arms up above your head if you wish. You can cross one leg over the other if that feels good. We'll spend one minute here.
want to grab the blanket, pull it over you, hug your knees into your chest. We're going to relax um, in Shavasana. This is the, the final pose, but arguably the most important. It consolidates all the the energy that you've been moving around your body it just allows it to settle and really infuse so lay on your back if you need to have something beneath your knees to, if it's not comfortable to lie flat on your back bring something beneath your knees allow the feet to fall out to the sides Perhaps lift your chest, uh, lift your head just to make sure that everything's straight. Sometimes you can lie down thinking you're straight, but actually you're quite lopsided. And as you lay down, keeping the back of the neck nice and long. If you have an eye pillow or the sleeve of a jumper that you can drape across your eyes, that's sometimes nice. And the intention of this pose is to completely let go. Surrender your body to the earth. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to be anything. Simply melt.
make some movement into your fingers and toes. Reach the arms up above the head and stretch. Hug the knees into the chest, pressing the spine into the mat. And rock gently from side to side. Drop your knees to the right your body to the right and after a moment's pause press the left hand into the mat and lift your body up trying to keep your gaze inwards eyes closed if you can come back to a comfortable cross-legged position just briefly while we close the practice. Notice how your body feels now at the end of the class, physically, emotionally. How do you feel? There's no right or wrong, it's just accepting what is. Hopefully you've seen a, a positive shift. And if not now, perhaps a little later today. Bring your palms together, hands in front of the heart space. Bow the head. Acknowledge your brilliant body. Your brilliant mind, your brilliant heart. Namaste.